بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته اعزائي الطلاب وطالبات المستوى الرابع برنامج بكالوريوس طب وجراحه الفم والاسنان اهلا وسهلا ومرحبا بكم في اللقاء الثاني من لقاءاتنا التعليميه في مقرر طب الفم في هذا اللقاء سنتحدث عن clinical examination as we studied in the in the, in the last uh, lecture we had talking about the clinical exam uh, we had talking about the patient history and the diagnosis and we well we was emph emphasized on the the history of the patient regarding the present complaint history and the social history medical related history and dental history of your patient after we finished taking the history from your patient using the specified case sheet we will talk the diagnosis the, the last lecture we had talking about the types of diagnosis related to oral medicine we, we was emphasized on the differential diagnosis which is very important type of diagnosis helping you in reaching the final diagnosis of your clinical presentation of your patient's case in this lecture the second lecture we will continue about the steps which help us to reach the final diagnosis which is the clinical examination after we finish to take a thorough exa history from your patient who will take we will continue to take the clinical examination regarding oral and intraoral extraoral clinical examination the learning outcome of this lecture the second lecture all the students should be able at the end of this lecture to describe the basic intra oral and extra oral steps of clinical examination as well as the students also should be able to perform the general examinations for the patient regarding the general health the general condition of your case the students also should, should be able to correlate between the clinical findings and the supposed medical med medical problems what is the clinical findings of your patient of your case and what is the correlations with the general systemic condition of your patient the students at the end of this lectures also should be able to perform systematic oral clinical examination we will talk about the physical examination and assessment of the general condition of your patient as well as how to perform extra oral and intra oral clinical examination regarding your case what is the intra oral examination in detail and how you will be able to perform a, an, a systemic clinical intra oral and extra oral clinical examination all these topics and subheadings will talk about it in this second lecture physical examination includes this is about the general examination general examination extra oral examination and intra oral examination when the patient came to you complaining from oral pain or dental pain not just to run to the oral cavity and examine the oral cavity you should examine the patient generally and also to look about the overall appearance of the patient if the patient has a clubbing fingers if the patient has a nodes in his fingers this is maybe related to other systemic diseases assessment of the general condition of the patient the appearance of the patient if there is any abnormal appearance or behavior of the patient pupil size of the patient conscious level of the patient as well as the movement of the patients if there is any remor or whatever the posture of the patient how the patient stand in front of you this is a clubbing finger finger of the patient which might be a symptom of cardio vascular diseases about the assessment of the general condition of the patient also we need to look about the face of the patient color of the face of the patient breathing of the patient speech how the patient talk with you facial color as we mentioned sweating if there is any sweating or wasting the diabetic patient may become with sweating patient with hi with hepatitis b or liver cirrhosis or liver failure will came to you with yellowish discoloration vital signs of the patient the conscious state the temperature of the patient the pulse and the blood and also the respiration of the patient 
extra oral head and neck examination after we finish the general examination of the patient we will move to the extra oral head and neck examination starting with the face how the face of the patient look like if there is any swelling of the patient it might indicate an inflammatory or neoplastic lesion if there is a pallor shuhub in the patient's face might indicate an anemic patient if there is rash as we see in this picture this is a butterfly what it's called it we called it a butterfly rash maybe there is a systemic lobus erythematosus or mitral valve stenosis if the patient's face has erythema may related to fever or infection if there is any asymmetry of the patients this is may indicate pills palsy or facial hemi hypertrophy as we see this patient complained with Bill's palsy or facial nerve paralysis on the eyes if the patient has exophthalmos so this is indicate thyrotoxicosis jaundice liver diseases hepatitis B or liver cirrhosis or whatever if the patient eyes has redness so may may indicate a Jogren syndrome Jogren syndrome may manifested in the oral cavity I dry as a dry mouth for example scarring scarring of the eye may indicate bimphigoid we will talk in detail we will talk in detail about bimphigoid in the red legions lectures Number three in the extra oral head and neck examination is a swelling is the neck. We will assess the neck if there is any swelling, sinuses, cervical lymph nodes, and salivary gland, thyroid. This patient complained from the swelling at the neck that may indicate any cyst or any cervical lymph node or lymph adenopathies. Also, we need to examine the salivary gland and also the thyroid glands this is the manner how to examine the thyroid gland instruct the patient to swallow and you will put your both hands over the thyroid cartilage lymph node examination should be done in detailed and you will sh and you must take into consideration how to examine the lymph nodes clearly and truly including the following the texture of this lymph nodes and the consistency of this lymph nodes and the nature the normal lymph nodes are not palpable not palpable if there is any infection or tumor in any or any other pathosis in the oral maxillofacial area the lymph nodes will be palpated swallowed and also you need to differentiate if there is any pain it is painful or painless tenderness if the patient responds to the examination is this lymph nodes attached to the underlying tissue or not if it is attached to the underlying tissue or what we called it fixed lymph node lymph node or attached to the underlying tissue so may indicate a serious malignant lesions Number four, temporomandibular joint examination. We're still talking about extra oral head and neck examination. Temporomandibular joint, facial symmetry, if there is any growth under development in any one of the condyles, there is a facial symmetry. Or masseteric hypertrophy. When the patient shoe cut for long time, there is there may be developed with masseteric muscle hypertrophy mandibular opening and closing baths you need to instruct your patient to open his mouth and close many times so you will detect if there is any deviations for the right or the left side mandibular opening extent if there is if there is a normal interincisal distance at the maximum mouth opening if there is no 
maximum or normal interincisal distance so the patient might complain with trismus lateral excursions and joint noises may be due to disc disorders disorders or may be due to any degenerative diseases of the TMJ both condyles tenderness pain and abnormal movement should be examined and also if there is any clicking in the examination of timbromandibular joint you might need to use a stethoscope to assess if there is any sounds or clicking or other abnormalities then you have to examine the muscles of mastications muscles of mastications we have the four main muscles of mastications the masseter muscle timbralis muscle lateral pterygoid and medium pterygoid muscle all those four must main masticatory muscles must be examined and evaluated clearly the masseter muscle this is the masseter muscle and timbralis muscle presented here in the tendrils and the lateral pterygoid muscle and the medial pterygoid muscle this is the lateral pterygoid muscles two heads and this is the medial pterygoid muscle then you have to examine the salivary glands we have three main salivary glands we have the parotid gland and the submandibular and the sublingual glands all these three main or major salivary glands should be examined you have to examine the gland itself and the duct of this gland and also the orifice of this duct parotid duct duct opening and papilla should be examined which is presented in the buccal mucosa opposing to the second molar submandibular gland and the duct and the duct opening papilla which is presented in the floor of the mouth at the tip of the sublingual frenum and also the sublingual gland should be also examined you need to examine these major salivary glands and inspect them and palpate it for facial symmetry if there is any swelling enlargement of these glands salivary flow is the gland is functioning or not salivary appearance if the, the saliva is clear colorless secretions or perulent exudate there is a perulent exudate or pus in the salivary gland secretions and also you will assess if there is any tenderness on one of the major salivary gland in the extra oral head and neck examination we have also the examination of the cranial nerves as we studied before there is a 12 cranial nerves all these cranial nerves should be examined most important relevant to the dentistry are the facial nerve trigeminal nerve glossopharyngeal nerve and the hypoglossal nerve hypoglossal nerve is the 12th cranial nerve glossopharyngeal is the 9th cranial nerve trigeminal nerve is the 5th cranial nerve and also we have the 7th facial cranial nerve the other cranial nerves are the olfactory nerve optic nerve oculomotor nerve trochlear cranial nerve as well as we have the trigeminal nerve <coughs> the abdiocent nerve facial nerve and also the vestibular cochlear nerve the glossopharyngeal nerve as we mentioned above is the 10th cranial nerve the 9th cranial nerve uh, sorry vagus nerve accessory nerve and also the motor of the tongue what we called it the motor of the tongue the hypoglossal nerve then we will move to the extra the intra oral examination so in this lectures in this lecture we had talking about the general examination of the patient
moving to the extra oral examination and then to the intra oral examination starting with the lips of the patient you, you should examine the lips of the patients and assess if there is any cyanosis which may indicate a cardiovascular diseases if there is any cyanosis is riqaq in the lips of the patients may indicate cardiovascular diseases related to oxygen deficiency angular shellitis at the angles of the mouth might be indicate candidiasis or iron deficiency or vitamin deficiency also babules can be also presented in the lips like for dye spots we'll talk about the for dye spots in the lecture of the normal variations moving to the cheek and buccal mucosa intraorally you should examine the buccal mucosa and the cheek which are commonly presented with the oral lesions we will look about and assess if there is any four dye spots lina alba which is a white line opposing the occlusal surface presented in the buccal mucosa hypersalivation if there is any dryness or hypersalivation we will assess it in the buccal mucosa lesions if there is white lesion or red lesion or whatever so this pictures presented with white lesions there is a reticular white lesions we will we'll talk about white lesions in two lectures in details if there is also lichen planus or leucoedema in the buccal mucosa we will assess it and evaluate the presence of the, those lesions number three in the intraoral examination is the floor of the mouth examination so we started with the lips moving to the buccal mucosa and moving to the floor of the mouth floor of the mouth and the ventral surface of the tongue should be assessed and evaluated so many of the lesions especially in the patients who take snuff or show a cut there is a serious lesions in the floor of the mouth so you should to visualize observe and also palpate by manually by manually manually means that you should use your both hands left and right hands by manually to detect if there is any abnormalities in the floor of the mouth the wartons duct is the duct of the sub mandibular salivary glands presented a two bubble as a two bubble here in the floor of the mouth at the end of the sublingual frenum must try to observe if there is any secretion of this gland or not does the lesions if there is a white lesion does this lesions can be webbed off can be rubbed off or not so this is differentiate this lesions from other from other lesions if if the lesion can be rubbed off so we can indicate there is might be a candidiasis or whatever if the lesions cannot be removed cannot be webbed off so it might be a leukoplakia or other white lesion this patient complained from the oral squamous cell carcinoma at the floor of the mouth and the floor of the mouth is the most dangerous area in the mouth and it is a common site of oral cancer after finishing examination the ventral surface of the tongue and the and, and the floor of the mouth we will move to the gingiva we will inspect the gingiva for the, its color if there is any pigmentation related to any systemic causes or local causes local causes might be due to amalgam restorations or whatever and systemic causes might be due to addison disease or might be physiological melanin pigmentation <coughs> the tone of the gingiva if there is gingivitis or any other periodontal disease the texture of gingiva should be also examined architecture and mucongiva relationship if there is any recession or other lesion of the gingiva as well as in the gingiva you should examine how the gingiva is affected is generally generalizedly affected or localized marginal erythematous or vibrous if the lesion is fibrous 
different totally from erythematous lesions fibrous lesions might be as the selectors and erythematous bases uh, erythematous appearance of the gingiva might be associated with erythma multiform or lymphoid or other plasma cell gingivitis or other lesions marginal versus generalized gingivitis if there is just inflammation on the marginal area of the gingiva may be black induced gingivitis or if there is a generalized gingivitis including the marginal gingiva the attached gingiva reaching the mucous membrane of the oral cavity this is may indicate other disease other than black induced gingivitis also the gingiva might be exposed to the side effect of drugs used for systemic conditions such as anti-epileptic drugs and calcium channel blockers and also the immune suppressant some of those drugs related with gingival overgrowth and some related with erythematous gingivitis moving to the hard palate intraorally and assess examine the hard palate from the presence of minor salivary gland diseases like sialometaplasia and if there is a syphilitic ulcer which most commonly presented in the hard palate <coughs> also the attached gingiva note the presence of tori if there is any maxillary tori torus palatinus or any other bony exostosis the soft palate of the patient should be also examined how does the soft palate rise up on the patient say ah vibrating line tonsillar pilaris tonsils and oropharynx you may need to use a tongue depressor to depress the tongue and examine observe the posterior part of the mouth moving to the oropharynx you need to assess if there is any change in the color consistency of the tissue of the oropharynx area look back by on the soft palate not occasional small globulets and or the pink opaque tissue which are normal and may include lymph nodes tissue when you examine the intraoral tissues you must differentiate between the normal variants and the other abnormal diseases we will take this informations in the lectures of normal variations moving in, in the intraoral examination reaching the tongue tongue examination is the very important part of intraoral examination since the tongue is the most one of the most common sites of oral cancer and other lesions the tongue and the floor of the mouth as we mentioned the most common places for oral cancer to occur you have the patient to protrude their tongue as the patient to protrude their tongue we may need to use a gauze to cut the tip of the tongue and pull it outside wrap the tongue in a dry gauze and gently pull it outside from the patient's mouth to observe the lateral borders you need to emphasize on the examination of the lateral borders of the tongue so it's the most common site of the lesions on the tongue the tongue also might be affected with other lesions which may be a uh, normal variance lesions or other lesions filiform papillae fungiform papillae circumvallate papillae are the papillae presented in the dorsal surface of the tongue and should be examined also lingual varicosities lingual varicosities as the sublingual veins may be dilated especially in the old patients and also we can find the fissure tongue or erythema multiform or lichen planus or erythema geographic tongue or what we called it a uh, geographic tongue signs of nutritional deficiencies and immune dysfunctions nutritional deficiencies can be presented in the tongue as a dry debilitated tongue and also we need to examine the tongue for hypoglossal nerve palsy asking the patient to protrude and move his or her tongue 
Also, you need to examine the tank from the presence or the absence of the oral cancer. In the intraoral examination, also you need to examine the maxilla and mandible hole, size and shape and contour of the mandibular jaw or the upper jaw, pre-prostatic treatment if there is any need for pre-prostatic treatment, tori removal as we see in these pictures, the prostate reduction in the upper in the upper arch, soft and hard tissue or both if there is soft or hard tissue need to surgical removal, epulous fissuratum. This is a lesion regarding or associated with prosthesis or what we call it a removable partial dentures or complete dentures. If there is L-fitting denture, L-fitting denture can lead to overgrowth in the mucosal membrane and mucosal tissue leading to what we call it a ebulous fissuratum. This hard bullet presented with nicotinic stomatitis, the patient is smoker as well as this picture. This is red dot, red pinpoint dots are the minor salivary glands with inflammation, minor salivary gland duct openings. Number 11 is the occlusion. You need also to examine the occlusion of the patient if there is any bony defects or bony lesions. There is maybe a mal occlusion. Orthodontic classification of the patient should be mentioned. If there is any interferences, interferences may lead to traumatic ulcer, to frictional keratosis, to other oral lesions. So you need to do a systematic oral examination. Systematic oral examination means that done at initial exam at recalls unless patient history requires sooner. You must visualize all areas of the oral cavity as we mentioned uh, before starting from the lips finished with the occlusal status of the patient. This is number one. This is number 11. Moving with the tongue and buccal mucosa and the floor of the mouth and the vestibules of the patients and the maxilla a hole and mandibular uh, jaw, salivary glands, timbromandibular as, uh, occlusal uh, associations and so on. Oral cancer can occur in other places not just emphasize or concentrate in the floor of the mouth and the tongue for finding the oral cancer. Oral cancer can be or might be founded in other places than the tongue and the floor of the mouth. Be complete. Examine all the parts of the oral cavity. Be, do good. Don't harm the patient. Do justice and respect the anatomy of the patient respect the anatomy. So starting with the lips, if there is any herpes labialis, if there is cellitis, if there is mucosils, which is a minor salivary glands or salivary gland diseases, granulomatous can conditions can be presented in the lips. The palate can be presented with torus palatinus with stomatitis nicotina as we see in the last picture in the smoker patient, benfigoid and benfigus. All these lesions can be presented in the palate. The tongue can be presented with geographic tongue, what we call it benign migratory glossitis, and burning tongue syndrome, and maybe the patient presented with aphthous ulcer in his or in her, on her tongue. The teeth should also be examined. The swelling, the facial swelling, may be related to the dental origin, to bulbitis, to, to dental abscess, to preapical abscess. Soft palate should be also examined, uvula of the patient, tonsils and also the tongue as we mentioned. The buccal mucosa, buccal mucosa should be assisted and assisted and evaluated if there is any leukedema, white lesion or lina alba as a white lesion, cheek biting, aphthous ulcer and lichen, planus or any other pigmented or red or white lesion. In conclusion, in this lecture, which is the second lecture of our course, we had talked about physical examination of the patient and assessment of the patient general condition to assess if there is any systemic disease 
this systemic disease may be related to the oral finding as an oral manifestation so this lesions should be treated for a systemic condition removal of the cause and will the, the, the oral finding or the, religion, or, or the oral lesion will be resolved then we move to the extra oral head and neck examination we had talking about this in detail starting and moving from the TMJ examination neck examination and the facial appearance and so on intraoral examination starting from the lips finishing with the occlusion of the patient moving to the buccal mucosa to the vestibule to, to every piece of the oral cavity and finally we had talking about the systematic oral examination emphasizing to be complete and to respect the anatomy of the patient the anatomy so the student must revise the subject of oral anatomy of head and neck anatomy so he can differentiate between the normal variations and the pathological findings of the oral cavity the assignment of the second lecture the student must perform a thorough clinical examination for your friend considering all aspect of the extra oral and intraoral examination so each student must perform a thorough clinical examination in front of the supervisor in the clinical sessions performing an oral examination general examination extra oral examination and intra oral examination for his or her student uh, friend this assignment also will be provided in the assignment section of this course as a word document under the title of assignment 2 thank you very much dear students for your listening